Which Mac should you buy going into 2025? In this video, I will look at six different personas and you know figure out which would be the best value Mac for them. Speaking of value, um, on this channel, I try to be um, at the intersection of tech and you know smart and sensible financial decisions. So obviously, yeah, the fully loaded M2 Ultra Mac Pro will be the best at everything, right? Uh, but it also comes in at the price of a small car and is absolutely not necessary for 99.9 .9 probably percent of use cases. And on the other extreme, I get it that a 15 year old MacBook uh, with four gigabytes of RAM technically still opens Photoshop, but that doesn't mean it is usable or a worthwhile experience. Rather, we look at what each application really needs in terms of CPU, GPU and RAM and then come up with the best value pick. And that also means that I'm really only um, considering Apple Silicon Macs in this video as the value proposition for older Intel Macs um, just is not there anymore. Let's start with our first persona here, the photographer. In general, working in software like um, Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop is not that demanding for modern systems. And probably the most important part is having enough RAM, especially when you are often you know, using both Photoshop and Lightroom or, or Capture One for that matter. Um, at the same time and you know have enormous big files. That said I have 16 gigs of RAM and it works just fine for me. So for stationary use it is no doubt the just announced M4 Mac Mini which offers incredible value as literally all reviews unanimously state. And it wouldn't really make sense to look for an older M1 or M2 Mac Mini as those came with 8 gigabytes of RAM in their base configuration which is not enough in my opinion and the ones with 16 are, you know, price-wise way too close to a new M4 Mac Mini. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to save 50 bucks for an older design that is slower and already two years old, right? If you want to invest a little bit more, I'd say add the 24 gigabytes of RAM for $200, but other than that, I wouldn't do anything. All right, now let's go to the MacBooks. Again, as Apple bumped up all the base model um, memory to 16 gigabytes due to Apple intelligence, um, at least the used MacBook Air doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So assuming that you that you would edit a lot on the go, I think that a bigger screen is great. So I'd look at the 15 inch MacBook Air with the M3 processor inside, which cost you uh, $12.99 in its base configuration. Again, the only thing I'd maybe upgrade is the RAM to 24 gigabytes. Alternatively, and really in the same price range, you could also look for this uh, MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M1 Pro chip from 2021, which is the one I use. These models can be had for around 1200 bucks and offer slightly better performance for photo editing than the M3 MacBook Air, as well as a much better display. But of course, those are two or two, three years old by now. So yeah, a bit of risk is involved here. And um, also, you know, the time of ownership will be a little bit uh, more limited as it is older, of course. Okay. Now let's go to video editing, which is definitely more demanding than photo editing, especially for the GPU as all the color grades and effects are rendered by the GPU. Um, while a powerful CPU is also important in order to decode highly compressed codecs like H.265 and H.264. So for stationary use, again, I think that the new Mac mini, this time in the M4 Pro variation, offers the best overall package. The 24 gigabytes of memory in the standard M4 Pro configuration uh, no, should, be, should be enough in my opinion and, and so is the pin 12 core CPU and 16 core GPU. Um, alternatively, you could also look at an older um, Mac Studio, the ones with the M1 Max and M2 Max, uh, which all might you know, give you a bit worse decoding performance, but in some cases like effects and color grading, um, slightly better performance to, due to the more powerful GPU in those Max chips. Also, they come with 32 gigabytes of RAM as standard and often with at least one terabyte of storage, which might be a plus for you. Price-wise, expect to pay a little less for the M1 Max Mac Studio, the M1 Max Mac Studio, <laughs> compared to our M4 Pro Mini and a little bit more uh, for the M2 Max Studio. Regarding laptops, I do think it makes sense to look at the same chips. So it is either a new M4 Pro, MacBook Pro, which can be had for $2,000 or a used M2 Max MacBook, which would be a little bit more expensive or a M1 Max, which would be a bit cheaper. Again, those Max chips come with 32 gigs of RAM and at least one terabyte of storage um, as standard compared to the 24 gigabyte memory and 512 storage in the new M4 Pro. If I had to choose here, I'd probably still go with a new M4 MacBook Pro. 
Now let's switch over to music production, where most people probably use Logic on their Macs. Logic um, relies heavily on the CPU, but doesn't need GPU power at all. So what we are looking here for is the best CPU we can find for our money. And again, the new M4 chips are just incredible. And for stationary use, I think that the base M4 Mac Mini, again, is the best value out there. I mean, come on, it's 599. So for, for music production, 60 gigabytes of RAM should be fine. But if you specifically know that, you know, you need more, just upgrade the RAM. In terms of raw chip power, the M4 is absolutely enough even for huge projects. When looking at laptops, I think it's a very close race between a one-year-old uh, MacBook Pro with an M3 Pro, which you can get for around $1,500, and the new M4 MacBook Pro, uh, which comes in at $1,599 new. And I do think that the older used M3 Pro MacBook wins here because the CPU performance is, you know, a little bit less maybe. Um, but um, the M3 Pro comes with two gigs more RAM, um, so it's 18 gigabytes uh, compared to 16, and the GPU performance of the M3 Pro will be a bit better than the, the one on the base M4 chip. While, as we just said, that doesn't really matter in music production, it still makes the system a bit more powerful and versatile overall for, you know, I don't know, video production or a bit of gaming on the side, who knows. Speaking of gaming, let's now have a look at 3D work and gaming. While in both cases a Mac is probably not the best way to go as NVIDIA's GPUs are the best for both gaming as well as professional 3D work, which is also the reason why for my um, V-Ray renderings of SketchUp models, which I do professionally uh, at times, I used to have a gaming PC with an NVIDIA RTX 3080 and now I use um, cloud computing. But, uh, well, wh where was I? Yeah, um, while a Mac might not be ideal here, uh, there is Blender, for example, which is optimized for Apple's Metal, and there are more and more games that work well on Apple Silicon. What you obviously need here is a very, very beefy uh, GPU. That's why for desktops, we are exclusively looking at the Mac Studios. And of course, the M2 Ultra would you know, be the best choice for maximum graphics performance. But if you want to go a bit cheaper, a used M1 Ultra or a used M2 Max would also work out nicely, in my opinion. Now, the M2 Ultra and M2 Max Mac Studios, um, of course, you can still buy them new, which honestly, I wouldn't do as of um, late 2024 now, when time of this video. Um, there will probably be an M4-based successor sometime next year. So I myself would probably try to find a cheap M1 Ultra or M2 Max and then upgrade to an M4 Max or whatever later on. That's especially because the M4 generation offers way better ray tracing capabilities, as much so that maybe when you rely heavily on ray tracing in Blender, for example, for now, even a Mac Mini with an M4 Pro might be a good choice. For laptops, we obviously don't have an ultra chip, but um, instead have a choice between the new M4 Max, M3 Max, and the aforementioned M2 Max and um, M4 Pro. Clearly, if you have the money, just get the M4 Max MacBook Pro. Otherwise, there's uh, not that much between the M2 and M3 Max in terms of performance. So if you want to get something used, I'd um, honestly go straight to the M2 Max, you know, which you can get for around $2,000 um, these days. As I, as I said before, the M4 Pro might also be a good choice um, when you're doing uh, a lot with ray tracing, as it might, you know, be uh, even more capable than the M2 Max and M3 Max. Okay, so when looking at programming using Xcode, the picture is similar to music production as we don't really need a good uh, GPU at all, but CPU and especially RAM do matter. Therefore, prioritizing RAM, I think the best value for a desktop Mac here is either a new M4 Mac Mini with 32 gigs of RAM and the 512 gigabyte SSD for $1,200, or if you want to step things up, a M4 Pro Mac Mini with 48 gigs of RAM for $1,799. For mobile machines, I think that a one-year-old MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro and 36 gigabytes of RAM for a bit under or a bit over $2,000, depending on 14 versus 16 inch, is the best value here as compared to an M4 MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of RAM, you get similar CPU performance with four gigabytes of RAM and a more beefier GPU for, you know, when you do other things besides coding. Of course, a new M4 MacBook Pro is still an excellent choice nevertheless. Last but not least, if you are planning to use your Mac for everyday tasks like email, browsing the web, spreadsheets, text documents, and so on, you can essentially buy any Mac with Apple Silicon from the last four years. 
The only thing I'd look for is to have 16 gigabytes of RAM. I mean, the older Macs with 8 gigabytes in the base model still work fine, but you know, too many Chrome tabs while working on a large spreadsheet and you know, you might run out of RAM quicker than you might think. Um, it is of course also future proofing, especially for things like Apple intelligence. So 16 gigabytes should be the minimum. So specifically looking at desktops again, you just cannot beat the base M4 Mac mini for $599. It is way more capable than the price suggests and you can do a lot more beyond everyday tasks. Now, of course, you could also look at an M4 iMac. If you are happy with its 24 inch screen plus Apple keyboard and, and magic mouse costing you $700 extra. The main reason here would be of course design. And you know, if you have your Mac in your living room or something, the 24 inch iMac is beautiful, no, no doubt about that. But, but maybe a used M1 iMac with 60 gigs of RAM for around $900 would also be um, a great fit here as its computing power is still absolutely sufficient for everyday tasks as in terms of CPU, it dwarfs nearly every pro machine that came out before 2020, so before Apple Silicon, which is kind of wild, right? Now on the mobile front, I think it's quite easy. Go for a MacBook here, go for 16 gigs of RAM. And then either a used M1 for around 600 bucks, a used M2 for around 800, a new M2 for a thousand or a new M3 for 1100. All of those will offer plenty of performance and it just depends on how much money you are willing to spend. I myself would probably go for an M2 as they feature the current MacBook Air design, which, you know, might have a positive impact on resale value in a few years, but really all of those are fine. So what am I using myself? Well, I use an M1 Pro uh, 14 inch MacBook Pro with the binned M1 Pro chip and 16 gigabytes of RAM as well as 512 gigabytes of storage. I use it mostly paired with my Apple Studio display utilizing the MacBook's great keyboard and trackpad. In terms of performance, I edit high resolution photographs both in Lightroom as well as in Photoshop. And um, I also do some 3D modeling in SketchUp, but um, no rendering as I use cloud computing for that, as I mentioned earlier. And then I, yeah, then I also run this YouTube channel here. So I also edit a lot in Final Cut. And so far um, it is my trusted daily workhorse and I don't really feel limited at all. Only thing I sometimes wish I had was a bit more RAM as I multitask a lot and, you know, often have Photoshop, Final Cut, 30 Safari tabs plus another 20 Chrome tabs, music and three spreadsheets all open at the same time. And you know, that puts a bit of pressure on my memory. So for the future, I plan to upgrade to an M4 or M4 Pro MacBook at some point next year. Partly because, um, you know, getting one with more RAM, but also because a three to four year ownership cycle has in the past proved to be the best value, for me at least. I also plan to create a video specifically about the cheapest uh, or best value way to own a MacBook. If that video already exists at the time of you watching this one, it will appear right here. Otherwise, feel free to enjoy a video that YouTube thinks you will love. All right then, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.